morning we offer Holy Mass for Bob Havens. There's a lot going on in our parishes and schools. Excuse me for being late. The clean of hands and pure of heart shall climb the mountain of the Lord and stand in his holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, giver of heavenly gifts, who in St. Aloysius Gonzaga joined penitence to a wonderful innocence of life, grant through his merits and intercession that though we have failed to show him, follow him in innocence, we may imitate him in penitence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When Amphaliah, the mother of Hazael, saw that her son was dead, she began to kill off the whole royal family. But Jehoshaphat, daughter of King Jehoram and sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, his son, and spirited him away, along with his nurse, from the bedroom where the princes were about to be slain. She concealed him from Ahaziah, and so he did not die. For six years he remained hidden in the temple of the Lord while Athaliah ruled the land. But in the seventh year, Jehoiada summoned the captains of the Carians and of the guards. He had them come to him in the temple of the Lord, exacted from them a sworn commitment, and then showed them the king's son. The captains did just as Jehoiada the priest commanded each one with his men, both go those going on duty for the Sabbath and those going off duty that week, came to Jehoiada the priest. He gave the captains King David's spears and shields, which were in the temple of the Lord, and the guards with drawn weapons lined up from the southern to the northern limit of the enclosure surrounding the altar and the temple on the king's behalf. Then Jehoiada led out the king's son and put the crown and the insignia upon him. They proclaimed him king and anointed him, clapping their hands and shouting, Long live the king! Athaliah heard the noise made by the people and appeared before them in the temple of the Lord. When she saw the king standing by the pillar, as was the custom, and the captains and the trumpeters near him, with all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets, she tore her garments and cried out, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest instructed the captains in command of the force, Bring her outside through the ranks, if anyone follows her, he added, let him die by the sword. He had given orders that she should not be slain in the temple of the Lord. 
she was led out forcibly to the horse gate of the royal palace where she was put to death. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord as one party and the king and the people as the other, by which they would be the Lord's people and another covenant between the king and the people. Thereupon all the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and demolished it. They shattered its altars and images completely and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. Jehoiada appointed a detachment for the temple of the Lord. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, now that Athaliah had been slain with the sword at the royal palace. The word of the Lord. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. The Lord swore to David a firm promise from which he will not withdraw. Your offspring I will set upon your throne. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. If your sons keep my covenant and the decrees which I shall teach them, their sons, too, forever, shall sit upon your throne. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling. Zion is my resting place forever. In her will I dwell, for I prefer it. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. In her will I make a horn to sprout forth for David. I will place a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon him my crown shall shine. The Lord has chosen Zion for his dwelling. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and decay destroy, and thieves break in and steal but store up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor decay destroys nor thieves break in and steal for where your treasure is there also will your heart be the lamp of the body is the eye if your eye is sound your whole body will be filled with light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be in darkness. And if the light in you is darkness, how great will the darkness be? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful gospel from the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus first talks about an eternal treasure, and that treasure is from the heart. If we set Jesus, particularly, let's say, his face as our treasure, 
then our hearts will be filled with really what they're looking for. And if something like an earthly possession, some lesser good, some even lesser relationships, if they become the whole of our heart, uh, then we're just, we're just going to break down, he says. We're going to decay, destroy. Uh, we might have certain things stolen from us. So Jesus could be our treasure. And I wonder if we stop. I, I mentioned before it's extremely busy with funerals and things relating to the, the graduations. We have pre-K graduation, kindergarten graduation, sixth grade graduation. There's just a whole lot of activity. And um, you could easily, without realizing it, and maybe, maybe this is me right now, uh, just forget, you know, to pause, to pray, even when we're doing things for the church. So let us keep our treasure as the heart of Jesus, the face of Jesus. He is our treasure, and this Holy Mass gives us that gift. Then finally, it's our treasure and our, our sight. Where are we looking? You know, the lamp of the body is the eye. If the eye is sound, the whole body will be filled with light. But if we're looking at bad things, our whole body will be in darkness. And I'm finding that because of the way they cover news nowadays, all the news is bad. That's what I'm finding. And so personally, I can't even stay informed without polluting my mind in a way that is depressing and just too much. So use your discretion. But for me, maybe the paper, not TV, no internet news. It's just too much. Our eyes, our minds, we could become so clouded. And so let's use our reason and say, how am I growing in my faith? Is there stuff that's just too much? Because the advertisers, the people who just want to keep us connected to that content, they could care less about our faith. They just want to sell advertising revenue and keep our eyeballs there. But God has something powerful for us. Our faith can be something that we look to. The face of Jesus is something we can look to. There is an incredible incredible gift in our midst. And so let's gaze upon the Holy Eucharist in this holy pause. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, that by the example of St. Aloysius, we may take our place at the heavenly banquet, clothed always in our wedding garment, so that by participation in this mystery, we may possess the riches of your grace. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating your reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hand, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels.
Just a moment, please. Let us pray. Bring us who have been fed with the food of angels, O Lord, to serve you in purity of life and following the example of Saint Aloysius, whom, whom we honor today. May we persevere in constant thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us.